sports time with more live college basketball than any other network. Tonight, live from Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa, Sports Time proudly presents Big 8 basketball action as the Indiana Hoosiers take on the Iowa State Cyclones. Tonight's telecast is brought to you by Bud Light. The best has a taste all its own, satisfying, but never filling. Another capacity, an electrified crowd here in central Iowa in Ames. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ken Wilson, along with Lucius Allen. Indiana, a powerhouse from the Big Ten, Iowa State from the Big Eight. And Lucius, as far as you and I are concerned, this is the biggest matchup we've seen this season. It certainly is, and they are tearing the roof down here at Hilton, uh, Hilton Coliseum. Indiana has Steve Alford, who is the perennial Olympian guard. He does everything for Indiana. He penetrates, he shoots, he's shooting a thousand percent from the field, he's leading the league, leading the team and, and assists and scoring. So this is a guy that, he, it was no fluke that he made the Olympic team as a freshman. Uh, even though his coach was coaching it, this guy is for real, and I think tonight will be evidenced by that. Key man for Iowa State, the big man in the middle, Sam Hill. Sam Hill, he has improved more than anybody at all on this Iowa team. What he has done is he's rebounding in double figures, He's shooting and scoring in double figures. He's blocking shots. He is the heart and soul of this uh, Cyclone defense. As far as the coaches, Johnny Orr on the left, Bobby Knight on the right. It's the first time that Iowa State and Indiana have met since 1963, but Knight went head-to-head -head for years with Johnny Orr when Orr was at the University of Michigan. That's right. There are no secrets between these two coaches. They've seen enough of each other that they know uh, they've worked together on the Olympic team this year. They know everything that everybody is going to be doing. They have the same type of philosophy defensively. They have the same type of philosophy offensively. You're going to see some teams that tonight are going to mirror each other in the way that they go about attacking you on defense and attacking you on offense. We're set to go. Indiana's in the top 20. Iowa State is undefeated. It's coming up. Excitement from Ames, Iowa next. Cyclone season. The Cyclones 5 and 0 taking on the Indiana Hoosiers 2 and 2. It should be a tremendous game here in Ames, Iowa tonight. Well, we're glad you're with us and we're set now for the starting lineups and the announcement from Gary Wade. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Hilton Coliseum for this evening's game between the Iowa State Cyclones the University of Indiana Hoosiers. Let's meet the starting lineup for this evening's game. First of all, for the visiting Hoosiers, at forward, a six foot eight inch junior from Newark, Ohio, number 41, Mike Chiomi. At forward, a six foot five inch sophomore from Lawrenceville, Illinois, number 50, Marty Simmons. At center, a seven foot two inch senior from Munich, Germany, number 33, Uwe Blau. At guard, a six foot two inch sophomore from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. And at the other guard, a six foot four inch freshman from Michigan City, Indiana, number 23, Delray Brooks. the U.S. Olympic team. All right, and now the starting lineup for your Iowa State Cyclones. At forward, a six foot five inch senior from Flint, Michigan, number 35, Barry Stevens. At the other forward, a six foot five inch freshman from Flint, Michigan, number 44, Jeff Grayer. Chicago, Illinois, number 33, Sam Hill. At one guard, a six foot three inch junior from LaGrange, Illinois, number 14, Jeff Hornacek.
fifth season at Iowa State, longtime Michigan coach, was at Massachusetts before that. He has really turned the program around here at Iowa State. At Iowa State, they had, oh, maybe 7,000, 8,000 fans that were coming here before Johnny Orr. Now that Johnny Orr is here, you can hear when he has turned, turned around at that this, uh, institution. Iowa State with that 5-0 and record against the Hoosiers 2-2. Two and two. The Hoosiers losing to Louisville and Notre Dame. Iowa State had a big test recently at Iowa, and they beat George Raveling's team there 54-50. The officials, Ron Spittler, Ed Schumer, and Mike Corey. And we will have the 45-second time clock here tonight at Ames. And the starting lineup, Naomi Simmons, Blum, Albert Brooks for the Hoosiers, Stevens, Prayer, Hill, Hornacek, Tompkins for the Cyclone. And it sounds like a Cyclone whirling here at the Hilton Coliseum. With a second effort, Indiana in red controlling and leading the way, Delway Brooks, the freshman guard. Uh, at the center position, Sam Hill is going to really have his work cut out for him, trying to guard. Indiana, Barney Simmons with a four pass, and here comes Iowa State. That was an example of pressure on the ball, overplaying the next logical pass. Iowa is not going to let Indiana do what they want to do. Outside, Hornacek, the junior from LaGrange, Illinois. Very smart player. He gets the ball back. Tompkins tries to cut into the middle. They come back outside to Jeff Grayer. Hornacek again. Well, that Indiana team always has the extremely tough defense. Yes, they pack it back in. They don't let you move where you want to do. Anytime you see anybody cut down the middle, you're going to see some bodies laid up on him. You don't let you go where you want to go. Alfred the rebound on Hornacek's effort. No score, just underway. Indiana and Iowa State. Here's Uwe Block outside. The jumper no good by Brooks. The battle for the rebound. Indiana's ball. Man open. Simmons elects not to shoot. Brooks outside. Oh, the big man inside, an awesome figure at 7-2, Uwe Block. This is Simmons, winging it into the corner to Brooks, fakes the shot, he was open for a minute. Now Block, made away jumper, and that's made away by Hill. That was a great defensive play by Sam Hill, and that's what he's been doing all year. Turning that, that center position into a dominant position for Iowa State. Hill, no good. Composure. Steve Alfred, the sophomore from Newcastle, Indiana. Inside block, forces his way up, and Indiana gets the first bucket of the game, just shy of the two-minute mark. Two to nothing, Hoosiers. You're going to see Indiana trying to run that power game to get Hill in trouble. They know that if they can get him in trouble, the Iowa State is going to be a lot, a lot less effective inside. They are not that strong of a rebounding team, and if they can get the best rebounder in trouble, it's going to be to their, to their advantage. Hornacek. Grayer back to Hornacek. This is Stevens coming outside. Tompkins is number three inside. Moving for the ball. Grayer and the play misfires. And it goes out of bounds to Indiana. There's an example of Bobby Knight's Hoosiers playing that tough, tough defense, forcing the team to make a backdoor pass and, and not being able to execute it. Here Iowa State is, is utilizing their quickness on a 2-2-1 two -two press. And when you're pressing, that makes things happen for you, doesn't that? Underneath, Hill and Block getting together. And the senior from Munich, Germany, Indiana's Uwe Block picks up the personal foul. Bobby Knight isn't going to like those types of fouls because he wants Block in there to dominate. He needs him in there to put pressure on the, in the Iowa, Iowa State uh, defense. Stevens. To Hill, who comes outside, he's 6'9", now setting a pick, and Brooks slides off that. Grayer, the freshman from Flint, Michigan, 
Iowa State traditionally under Johnny Oy with a lot of players from Michigan, and that's back to his old ties at the University of Michigan. The outside jumper by Stevens off the iron, and Alford will bring the ball up court. Two to nothing, Indiana. Alford has trouble in traffic, and a foul is called against Gary Tompkins of the Cyclones. I think that's a pretty good call by the official. He has to set the tempo early. Here we'll see, we'll see uh, Albert making his move down. Watch number three, he gets up and bodies up. He is not gonna let him penetrate at all and stick that leg up. That is always going to be a foul, but what the officials are doing is they are not going to let them get unfair advantage. We've seen three minutes, 20 seconds of basketball here in Ames, Iowa. One bucket, Indiana has the two to nothing lead. Simmons off on the wing, Alfred the bomb off the rim. Flop underneath, tries to go off and Hill trying to stuff the ball back in his face commits the personal foul so both hill and blop now with a personal blop again going to the offensive board like a tiger utilizing that big seven foot frame here we'll see him he goes up gets a good head and shoulder fake and gets his body in between hill and the ball and there's nothing that hill is going to be able to do with the big seven footer down in that area blop is 7 to 250 pounds and he makes it three to nothing, Indiana. Blop went to high school in Effingham, Illinois. He was there on a Rotary International Scholarship. Still three to nothing. The rebound shot is good. As Mike Giomi, a junior from Newark, Ohio, connects. Five to nothing, Indiana. In the early going here, we got Indiana dominating inside, and that's going to hurt Iowa State. But Iowa State is at home. Commits the foul. Cyclones will inbound. Hornacek doing the honors to Tompkins. Brayer swings it off to Hornacek on the wing. Tompkins drives, runs into traffic, and is fouled. Fouled by Marty Simmons, the sophomore from Lawrenceville, Illinois. Take a quick look at Indiana's defense. Anytime anybody penetrates, you're going to get help from three, four. You see four red shirts in there, and you take your life into your hands when you penetrate against the Bobby Knight team. Bobby Knight's club up five to nothing. Knight recently, of course, achieving his 400th coaching win. Line drive effort in and out by Barry Stevens, and the Cyclones could not buy a point. Four minutes have been played. Five to nothing, Hoosiers, and they have the ball. There's an interesting matchup going between Delray Brooks, the freshman, against Barry Stevens, who is a senior, and who is the, uh, the leading scorer with this Iowa team. That's and Stevens, 35, who committed the foul. That is correct. And, and what will happen there is you got two great athletes going against each other, one from the young school, one from the old school. And uh, believe me, Barry, Barry Stevens wants to teach this young kid how to play basketball, how they play basketball in the Big Eight. Lop now two out of three from the line. Six to nothing Hoosiers. They won their most recent game, of course, when they defeated Kentucky 81-68. That was Knight's 400th career coaching win. Seven to nothing. Hoosiers. 15-53 to go in the first half. This is All-American Basketball on Sports Time. The Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa. Iowa State shut out thus far seven to nothing. Their 16 wins last season, second highest in the history of basketball here at Iowa State. They had quite a year. Their first national postseason tournament appearance in 40 years. Johnny Orr took the Cyclones to the NIT. Well, they have they have a very a very strong test tonight in Indiana, and I think they are playing with a lot of emotion. And when you play with a lot of emotion, you don't always execute as well offensively. The ball. And right now, Johnny Orr is just on the sideline praying that his Cyclones are going to take that basketball through the net. They haven't scored yet. That's so true. Here we'll see the shot, but the rebound. You'll see a, a, a great athlete in Stevens going up to get that rebound. I'm sorry, that wasn't Stevens. Uh, that was Jeff Breyer, a uh, young freshman. But Breyer! And the Cyclone finally runs. As I was saying, we're going to see a lot from this 
this young kid. He comes to play, and he is going to take charge out there. This is one of those games where emotion can, have, can play a big factor, especially for a young kid. It can, make him, it can make him play badly. It can make him play great. That first hoop that he's made, in addition to that big offensive rebound, is going to really help get him off to a good start. Grayer on the foul by Brooks. Fails. Alfred gets the board. Steve Alfred at one guard. Delray Brooks at the other for Indiana. They have a five-point lead. Simmons gets it back to Brooks. Underneath, Uwe Block and Mike Giomi. This is Brooks. Simmons frequently comes outside. He's number 50. With the basketball, thinking of shooting, he elects not to. From outside, the big man at 7-2, Uwe Block. What a start he's had. Seven points already. He's averaging nine points a game. Well, he uh, he got to a slow start. He had an emergency appendectomy. And uh, then when he came back, he wasn't playing with the fire that jo uh, Bobby Knight wants him to play with. And he made he made the comment that he hopes Uwe comes to play every night. And it looks like he's come to play tonight. Hill, turn around, jump again. Yeah. of the evening. Grayer with two, Hill with two for Iowa State. Brooks looks, to it Alford. Looks, it looks like every time that uh, Iowa State scores, there's another block by Big Sam Hill. Every time that Iowa State scores, they are going to be into a zone press. Stevens misses. Now the other way. What a pace here in the first half. Indiana leading Iowa State 9-4. I think we're going to see a lot more fast breaks from this Iowa State team than we're going to see from the Indiana team because they make things happen on the defense and then they want to attack you and get that shot up immediately. Very good point. Block scores. He has nine of Indiana's 11 points. Uh, and what he's doing real well is he's pounding those offensive boards. My unofficial count has him at three offensive rebounds for seven points. Nearly 14,000 looking on here tonight. No defensive position that time. Marty Simmons earns his second foul. Um, watch the defense. Now, he has to have a position that's set. He is not set. That's a very good call by the official and a good move to the baseline by the, Indi uh, by the Iowa State player. Indiana took a 7 to nothing lead. The game was 4 minutes, 29 seconds old before Iowa State scored. And it's 11-4 Indiana, and the Cyclones will be inbounding. On all of the home games prior to this, it was Iowa State that got out to the 11-2, 11-3, 12-4 lead. And you'll get a chance to see what his team is made of tonight because they're going to have to fight back against the 10th Indiana team. Here's Stevens. The steal passes, and here come the Cyclones. A three-point Hoosier lead, 11-8. Giomi misses. Blop is there, and it's 7-2. He has been a dominant force here in the first half. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, that press is going to give Indiana a little bit of trouble because Iowa State has great quickness, and they seem like they are very, very well coached in this, in this zone-pressing defense. So, after a score, we're going to watch and see how many times Indiana can come up and get that nice, good shot off the press without really rushing. Outside, Barry Stevens. On the wing, it's Tompkins. Hill against Bloff. The hook is short. And you can clearly see that Indiana is able to control the boards against Iowa State. They sure are, and uh, that's going to be the big difference in any basketball game. He who controls the boards has the best shot at winning. So uh, Iowa State is going to have to work a little bit harder. Back and do is Brooks. Like this. Tompkins scores again. It's 13 to 10. Again, Iowa State is roared back to within three. Lead has been seven in the first half. Baseline, Diomi, no walk. Simmons can't get the garbage bucket, tries again, no. And finally, he's hacked. The foul called on Jeff Grayer, the Iowa State freshman from Flint, Michigan. Well, we're going to 
see some determined basketball played inside. The shot goes up and it's missed. He, he gets position under here. Uh, we have it on the replay. Number 50 gets great position in there, but Sam Hill is a force to be reckoned with. He tries to get it out, gets the ball back, puts it back up, misses it, and finally gets the foul call. But he was missing those shots because he was trying to avoid Mr. Hill inside. Both Hill and Grayer were there. Grayer picking up his first personal. 16 fouls against Indiana, four against Iowa State. And with 11.49 to go in the first half, the Hoosiers lead by three. that's inside is going to be the team that gets the most the most opportunities to score. Here we go. You he shoots a hook shot, comes back and jumps up, and you got this big force inside. It's up, but there's nothing that anybody's going to do with them with the ball in there. Shooting percentage is, you look at the rebounds, all Indiana, rather low. Indiana, 31% from the field. Iowa State, 36%. First half, 13 to 10. Indiana. This is Alfred holding the ball, directing traffic. He wants Brooks to come outside. Brooks, the freshman, Alfred, the sophomore. A sophomore, Gene Jr., and a senior up front for Bobby Knight's Hoosiers. Iowa State has switched into a zone. They're trying to counteract all that power play inside and hope to get some rebounds. Looks like it worked to their advantage right there. Jeff Grayer out to Sam Hill, over to Jeff Hornison. that press, taking their time, getting the ball into the middle, getting a three-on-two situation on the baseline, and hitting a difficult shot on the baseline. Indiana by three, Mike Giomi with four, and Blop with the other 11. Alfred the rebound on the shot by Hornacek. Indiana back with a three-point lead. State back into a man for man. We have a Steve Alfred out there. It makes it awfully tough for you to try to run any type of a zone defense against Indiana. So you have to suck it up, play it real tough. Alfred did not have the shot outside. He goes inside to score and then commits the foul. Here's a great move one on one. He penetrates and throws the ball up so softly on the board. The defensive player had come in and made good position. The contact was initiated after after the shot was taken. Hence, we're going to get a one and one on the other end. And I, I really like this new rule in college basketball because even though Alfred scores, Iowa State gets a chance to come right back down and score from the free throw line because they they did the correct things defensively. Iowa State got to within one. The Hoosiers have rolled off four straight points and Grayer unable to convert in the Indiana lineup now. Wop ends up on the floor. Sam Hill, uh, it, it, he's he's trying to front Blop. They get an excellent pass to Blop over the top, and he comes up and tries to block it. And uh, you got a big seven-foot uh, UA Blop in there with all of that power. There's no way he's going to block. I think in that instance, Sam is going to have to let him have those two points and hope that he can get assistance from his other teammates. Lop on the free throw, fails, and it's a five-point Indiana lead. Indiana, Lop with 11 points, Giomi with four, and Alford with two. And it's now 18 to 12, Indiana again up by six. <laughs> Iowa State coming back, led by Tompkins. Six points to lead the Cyclone. Alfred drawing the ire of the crowd. And Barry Stevens is winning this battle with Delray Brooks, who is the, the old lion against the young lion. And I love to see these type matchups.
Swap fails. Morgan can't get the rebound. Hill the outlet to Tompkins. Indiana, a good job getting back, staying with the Cyclones. And that's another trademark of Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. They sprint back probably faster than anybody in the nation. They don't want you getting those easy buckets on. They want you to fight that tough man-for-man -man defense where they have everything packed in, a lot of help, a lot of assistance, and there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do when you have to pack, uh, fight against that packed-in defense in a half-court situation. 8.49 left in the first half. Indiana on defense. They are maintaining a four-point lead. Stevens again. Gary Stevens is averaging 19 a game. He has eight in the first half. A two-point lead for Indiana. And the Hoosiers lose the ball in the backcourt. Well, that pressure is paying off again for Iowa State. And we see Barry Stevens taking control of this Iowa State Cyclone. He, he, is the, he is the senior. He is the man that they look to for leadership. And he is responding brilliantly. Unofficially, the Hoosiers now with four first-half turnovers. Iowa State can tie it with a field goal here. They go to Stevens, but he walks with the ball. Kind of stumbled when he picked up the pass. I thought that was a good call. His, his foot slid a little bit, but he is uh, forced to be reckoned with. Here, we'll watch the handoff. Watch his right foot. He slipped. I don't know about Yes, he did. He did not get the dribble down before he picked up his pivot foot, and that is traveling. Stu Robinson, number 22 in the game for Indiana. He gets the ball from Morgan. This is Robinson, a junior from Anderson. Giomi gives Indiana a four-point lead, 20 to 16. And we've got about 15,000 officials in here that are saying Indiana is traveling every time Indiana touches the ball. Uh, anytime you call it on Iowa State, then the fans are going to want you to try and call the same thing on the other team, and they are really hollering for it right now. Iowa State, Stevens, the tip in by Sam Hill. Again, the Cyclones back to within two. Hill with four points. Winston Morgan, number 21 for Indiana. He's double teamed. Alfred's open. Swings it over here to Robinson. Alfred in the corner. Covered well by Tompkins. Alfred again. A real leader on this Hoosier ball club. This is a nice defensive surge by Iowa State. Uh, this game is getting hot and heavy. We're at that point in the game where some team is going to start taking control. Nice move underneath by the junior, Mike Giomi. He's 6'8", 225. He has eight points for Indiana. Lop leads the way with 12. And with seven minutes left in the opening half, Indiana 22, Iowa State 18. That was an excellent backdoor pass set up by Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. And that's one of those things that they're going to have to do to get a good, decent shot against Iowa State. Stu Robinson, the junior at 6-1, commits his first personal. He just came in the game. At 17 fouls against Indiana, Iowa State with a couple. There's a good look at Robinson. Changes now by Johnny Orr. Greer and Tompkins come out. Number five, lining up is LaFester Rhodes. He comes into the game. At the free throw line, Hornacek. And he's successful. It's 22-19, Indiana. Now Tompkins went over to the bench. He'll stay in the game. Hornacek with his second point. And with 6.49 to go, Indiana 22. before 14,296 here in Ames, Iowa. We're glad you're with us on Sports Time. Sports Time's All-American College Basketball action continues tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, it'll be the Cincinnati Bearcats, much improved, hosting Gene Bartow and the University of Alabama Birmingham Blazers. Of course, the Blazers weren't in the top 20 when it all began, but they've moved there quickly. They defeated Tennessee, Illinois, and Kansas to win the Great Alaska Shootout, and we hope you saw it here on Sports Time. If you didn't, you'll see Alabama, Birmingham, and the Bearcats.
at 8 tomorrow night, Eastern Time. Well, what a game we have, Lucius Allen, here in Ames, Iowa. It's a beauty. Yes, indeed. And I tell you, the rebounding has been the story. We got Indiana, who's only shooting 31%, but they've got 18 rebounds. Six of which are offensive rebounds. Against Iowa State, they've up their shooting percentage to 45%, but they only have eight rebounds. And this game looks like it's going to be decided inside on the board. What a difference for Indiana. You mentioned shooting 31% in the first half. In that win in their last game against Kentucky, the Hoosiers shot 66%. Indiana with the ball. 6.47 to go in the first half. They have a two-point lead. Anytime Iowa State scores, Indiana's going to have to come and face that zone press. And uh, they've turned it over a couple of times. They haven't handled it in Indiana fashion. And I think they're going to uh, have to see that all night now. No question about Winston Morgan shot. The senior has his first points. Back to a four-point lead are the Hoosiers. Those Indiana teams, it's hard to zone against those Indiana teams because they all shoot the ball so well from the perimeter. And in, in order to save Sam from getting into any kind of zone offense, a lot of this first, rest of this first half. Tompkins now with six points with that bucket. Indiana by two. 5.58 to go. We're in a 2-1-2 zone again, and I think that's a very smart move by Johnny Orr to keep, keep his interior game. Giomi hacked on the arm on his way up. The foul on Gary Tompkins. Check it, make it LeFester Rhodes who picks up the foul, his first. And this play is set up by a great backdoor pass. Again, Indiana is not is taking just what Iowa State is going to give them. They're going to give them the backdoor. They're going to take them. They're going to pound them inside. Mike Giomi averaging 15 points a game. Giomi failing on his first free throw, shooting 72% from the line, and he's over two tonight. And here come the Cyclones. They can tie the game. And they do. Barry Stevens. This is the first time that the Cyclones have not been trailing. Indiana jumped to a 7-2 lead. Indiana more than once is led by seven in the first half. Well, that was a great pass by Hunasek to set up the play for Barry Stevens. And now he's going to turn over a momentum of switching in the Iowa State favor. Five turnovers by the Hoosiers here in the first half. That time it was Robinson. And this gym is a snake pit. I would not want to come in here and play against Iowa State. These fans. Uh, intimidate the officials, they intimidate the opposing players. It makes it awfully tough to come in here and get a victory. Sam Hill. The hook from long range is short. And Alfred for Indiana dribbling the ball. 4.55 left first half. Knotted up at 24. Uh, when Sam took that shot, uh, Johnny Orr uh, ducked his head down. He just couldn't believe he tried to take a shot like that. Block. Couldn't get the pass, comes outside. Giomi scores to give the Hoosiers the lead again, 26-24. Isn't it amazing how the crowd quiets down after you score? That's what Indiana's gonna have to do to shut this crowd up. They gotta put the ball in the bucket. Giomi's come on for the Hoosiers. He has 10 points. Blop leads the way with 12. Tompkins for the Cyclone walks with the ball. And the violation gives it to the Indiana Hoosiers with 4.06 to go in the first half. That's a very good call, but nobody knew the official had made the call. No one can hear the whistle. That's only three turnovers unofficially for Iowa State. There's Jeff Grayer returning to the game. Bringing the ball up for Indiana, Stu Robinson. Off to Winston Morgan. Steve Alford back to Morgan. Blop is underneath with Giomi. The battle, Hill. Iowa 
State trying to use their quickness and the transition by Indiana is out. He is having a great first half. And with Sam Hill in foul trouble, he can't do anything in there to try and stop Uwe Blob right now. He's, the only thing he can do is not let him get the ball. Here's Hill. And Blob gets in the way. Blob has his third foul. He's the first player in the game to get up to three personal. Well, I tell you, that's going to really help Ohio State. The way Uwe Blob is playing, if they can get him out of the game, they can maybe make some progress against this Indiana team. That was a great power move by Sam Hill. He saw that he had the opening. He went in, made the power move, and, and drew the foul. Hill with four points. This is the first time we've seen him at the free throw line. He's one of those rare breeds that shoots better from the field than he does from the free throw line. Hill, a sophomore from Chicago. <laughs> He can tie it here. Fails to. Giomi has it for Indiana. And bringing it up is Robinson. 28-27 Hoosiers. Indiana bringing Todd Meyer in the game. He's number 30. Hill gets the rebound for Iowa State. Quickly to Barry Stevens, the 10 footer off the glass and the rim, no good. Well, that Barry Stevens gets down the floor quicker than anybody I've seen this year. He gets down and has a very nice soft shot on the, on, on the, off the glass, and he's one of those players that's going to be much, much tougher in an open floor situation than he will be against that set up zone. Morgan pumps it through, and it is 30 to 27, Indiana. Morgan with four points. State able to come back and tie, but they can't quite get the lead. They can't. Indiana is fighting them off tooth and nail. Jeff Hornacek, the junior, has four points, and Iowa State back to within one with a minute 45 left in the first half. Alfred to Giomi, in and out, and Hill really getting to the boards now. Indiana taking Uwe Blop out with the three fouls, and that's making all the difference underneath the basket. It really is. That's uh, an unfortunate situation. We saw Grainer make a Grayer make a very fine move and tried to make the pass back, but that collapsing Indiana defense helped. And then we see Steve Alford come down and hit the hit the easy jump shot from the baseline. You leave Alford open, fail to pressure him, and he'll score like that all it's, night it's long. Just like money in the bank. A minute five left, first half, 32-29, Indiana. Here comes Alfred again. Stu Robinson. Over to Winston Morgan. Now Giomi inside with Todd Meyer. There it is. Alfred making it look easy. Indiana lead early in the half on numerous occasions they built up a lead at seven points and that's what's so difficult to do you cannot zone against these Indiana teams because they have that great outside shooting down to 23 seconds remaining in the opening half before a standing room only crowd in Ames Iowa and it looks like Johnny R is opting for the last shot in this situation he wants the last shot uh, he wants it to be a good shot but they are not really going aggressive. Now they're going out aggressively after the move. Seven seconds left. Hill scores. He has seven points. And at halftime, here at the Hilton Coliseum, the roaring crowd approving the first 20 minutes of play. Indiana leads Iowa State 34 to 31. Season here 
You can see his record 8 and 15 when he was at Michigan with the Wolverines against the Hoosiers. Indiana will be on defense as the Cyclones inbound. And we're underway in the second half here at Ames, Iowa. Ken Wilson with Lucius Allen. Glad you're with us. Barry Stevens can't score. And Indiana has the basketball. That's a fine block by UA Blob. Uh, they're trying to take it inside to take advantage of the fact that he has those fouls. And uh, he's coming out playing just like he has no fouls at all. Mike Giomi on the back of Jeff Grayer. Giomi has his second foul. You mentioned Blob with three, Simmons with two. They're the men with the most fouls on the Indiana side. Well, Giomi, I tell you, he is. He is taking care of the defensive end rebound-wise for the Indiana Hoosiers. He is doing a yeoman's defense in there, and uh, Uwe Blob is getting the offensive rebounds for the Hoosiers, and those two kids are the ones that are really destroying this Iowa State rebounding effort. Iowa State with the five starters from the first half here in the second half. Grayer shot too long, Blob with a rebound. So Iowa State with Stevens Hill, Grayer, Tompkins, and Hornacek on the floor here in the second half. Alfred into block. Uve shot tipped away by Big Sam Hill. Tompkins. Gary Tompkins with eight points. 34-33 Indiana. And that's what Iowa State wants to do. They want to come down and get those easy, quick shots off the fast break. If they can do that, they can get in condition, into contention with this uh, Indiana team. But if they have to fight that defense, it's awfully tough. Alfred shot finally falls into the hole. Alfred with eight points. Third leading scorer for Bobby Knight's Hoosiers. Again, the Hoosiers by three. That's probably the easiest shot that he's had. And uh, you can tell the shooters. He had what we call shooter's touch. Get the back part of the rim, bounce back up, fell in just like a feather. I thought it was the Lucius Allen touch. <laughs> I wish. Indiana with that always tough defense. Uwe Blop at 7-2 underneath. The shot won't go for Hill, but he's there. However, a whistle before the play, a whistle before Hill's effort up at the rim. Oh, did we see a fine athletic effort by uh, Barry Stevens coming in? Here we go. We see he gets position, goes out, shoots a nice soft shot off the board. It just didn't fall, but watch this follow through if we can see it. We didn't get a chance to see it, but he was about two feet over the rim there. Steve Alford is charged with the foul. Alfred is out there for Indiana to start this half with Stu Robinson, Mike Giomi, Uwe Blob, and also Winston Morgan. <laughs> Jeff Grayer making the free throw, his first in three efforts. And with this free throw, if he's successful, he can pull Iowa State within one. And he does. And uh, he's playing a lot smoother than he was in the first, the first few minutes of the game. And that's because he's a young player. They have a great trap, and Alfred finds a way to get out of it and breaks the press. What a player Steve Alfred is. Look at that. End to end by the sophomore. Out of trouble, into trouble, back out of trouble, and then into the big guys with the loop-de-loop -loop off the backboard. The guy can do it all. Oh, that could be a backbreaker there with 17.47 to go. Alfred's outstanding end-to-end -end effort. Okay. Hill outside, looking inside, swings it over to Hornacek. He'll go from over. Nice touch that time for Jeff Hornacek. Give him six points tonight. Alfred comes right back. 22 is Robinson for Indiana. He's looking basket, but finally gives it off. There's a tremendous battle going on inside between Mr. Hill and Mr. Block. They are banging and knocking each other. Rebound by Grayer of the Cyclones. Cyclones with a bucket can take the lead for the first time. No basket. And the foul as Gary Tompkins is knocked over is charged to Uwe Blob, his fourth. And we get a chance to see the quickness of the Iowa State team. They have passed that ball up the court in three seconds. And got a foul on Uwe Blob, which is going to change Indiana's offensive strategy. With the big guy out of there, it's going to make it a lot easier for Iowa State to get done what they have to get done. This could be certainly a huge turning point with 17.01 to go. And there goes, there goes Blob out of the game, and the fans love it. Fourth foul for Uwe Blob. And it's
It's 38-37, Indiana. Worry on that base. Hornacek to throw it in. Finds Tompkins. Bumping underneath. Rare of Iowa State. Morgan of Indiana. Morgan has his first personal. Now, Indiana right here will have to be very careful to not let the crowd take them out of this game. They have the lead. All they have to do is do what they've been doing all afternoon, all evening. And uh, with this crowd, though, it makes it awfully tough on those young kids out there to execute and try and get things done. He leads Iowa State. 40 38. Iowa State with the lead. Iowa State with the lead for the first time. They trail at the half by three. And Indiana looking for an important offensive show here. They need the bucket to get back. And you'll see Indiana, they'll show a lot patience in a situation like that and get a very good shot right out there 15 feet away. And that's a mark of a well-coached team. Stu Robinson has his first field goal. Fraser comes back, rushes things a little bit. Rebound Indiana tied at 40 with 16-20 remaining. Iowa State wants to get down and get that shot quickly because they know Indiana is going to be packing that, that defense back in. And when you got a Barry Stevens with the way he's shooting the ball tonight, I don't think that was a bad shot. I think when you have a guy that can score like he's scoring, to get down the floor, get that good opportunity shot, get it in a position where he feels he can make it, it's going to do nothing but help Iowa State. Gary Tompkins, the foul. First team foul against the Cyclones in the half. because he feels that the officials are taking this game away from him at this point in time. Jeff Hornacek, successful on one of the two technical foul shots. Iowa State up 41-40. The other good thing about that technical is Iowa State retains possession. So they have a possibility of having, uh, with one, one free throw made, a three-point three point goal here. Iowa State has not led by as many as three, but they can achieve that here. They have Wes Wallace in the game. He's a senior, number 30, and he has the ball. Hornacek bounces it to Grayer. Hill takes it. Fifteen and a half minutes left in the second half. 41-40, Iowa State. Hornacek shovels it to Hill, and Indiana intercepts. Brooks in traffic able to pull his way through. And the pass going away. Hill the length of the third. Fraser is grabbed and fouled by Indiana's Winston Morgan. Well, we are, we are in crunch time right now. These players know that whoever can get out and take, take advantage here are going to win it. And here we'll see number 21. He's not going to let Steven shoot that ball at all. He says, you're going to have to make these two from the free throw line, buddy. Bob 
Bobby Knight Soldiers. And you see Bobby Knight staying in the coach's box now. Uh, yeah, after he cost his team a couple of points there, he's gonna he's gonna uh, stay in that stay in that coaching box for a while. The Hoosiers built up a seven to nothing lead to start the game, led at the half, 34-31. And with that free throw by Barry Stevens, Johnny Orr's Cyclones lead 42 to 40. And Stevens has had a whale of a game. He already has 16 points. Now make it 17 and a three-point Cyclone lead. With Lucas Allen, this is Ken Wilson on Sports Time. You're watching the excitement of all-American basketball. And we have Iowa State is shooting 49%. We got Indiana shooting 49%. They're even there. State starting to take the man inside. They've got 16 rebounds now to Indiana, who has only gotten two rebounds this half. And the turnovers are relatively equal uh, with Iowa State with five and Indiana with six. And the score, relatively equal. Iowa State, a three-point lead. Alfred trying to cut it to one. He's fouled, and the shot doesn't fall. The foul on Jeff Hornacek, the junior from LaGrange, Illinois. Well, I don't want to jinx him and mess up his perfect streak, but that is not the player that you want to foul in this situation. You want to make them shoot a jump shot. You want to make them, make them shoot a shot they don't want to make. They don't want to shoot. Get that rebound and get it out and try and get your fast transition offense going for you if you are an Iowa State fan. Alfred, 15 of 15 at the line. Pretty fair start. He can really drop it. He's one of those guys you put the blindfold on him and he does it backwards and he swishes him. <laughs> when, when you look at the rotation on that ball, that, it doesn't have very much chance of missing because it is all pure shooting. Iowa State 43, Indiana 42. 15 minutes left in a most exciting game and we are happy to have you with us. Whoa. The collision, and Whoa. I do mean a couple of trucks coming together. Tompkins of Iowa State and Winston Morgan of Indiana. Tompkins picks up the foul. On the replay, he passes and he cuts to the basket really fast, and he's very much out of control. We see uh, uh, number 22, uh, number 21, Delray Brooks, is in great position there to draw the foul, to draw the offensive foul. I'm sorry, number 21, Winston Morgan. Here comes Indiana. Brooks at one guard. Robinson at the other, and Alfred also out there. Up front, Giomi. Alfred from the corner. And pure shooting. He is incredible with 14 points, Alfred. Blop on the bench in foul trouble with 14 also. All of his scoring in the first half. And we see uh, Steve Alford. He's scoring, and it doesn't look like he's trying to score. He's not being that aggressive offensively, and he still has 14 points in there. Last four points scored in this game from Steve Alford to give the Hoosiers the lead, 44-43. 14-26 left. Standing room only at the Hilton Coliseum in Ames, Iowa tonight. Johnny Orr is home. Iowa State defeating Mankato State, Creighton, Iowa, Augustana, and Drake by just a point in their most recent game. Five and all are the Cyclones. Fraser looking good, but a little short. Giomi gets the ball, and he almost let it trickle away. Yes, sir, and one interesting point about this second half is defensively there have been no offensive rebounds. Everybody's getting one shot and one shot only. That's the mark of those teams that know how to put their bodies on people that are well coached. Tompkins goes by, and then the ball switches by him. Alfred with 16 points, this impressive guard, averaging 17 a game. And again, Indiana now with a three-point lead just a few moments ago. In fact, just over a minute ago, Iowa State led 43 to 40, but six straight Indiana points. And Steve Alfred... You say, you, you, you know, you want to say a veteran. You, you feel that Albert's a senior, and this young man's only a sophomore. So it's 46-43 Indiana. A long way to go, 13-55. This is college basketball on Sports Time.
Ken Wilson, Sports Times, All-American Basketball, and this is All-American Excitement. This is what college basketball is all about, Ken. Uh, these kids have come out, they're playing their hearts out. It's going to be too bad that somebody has to lose this basketball game. Rebound's a big factor, but also a big factor. Seven foot two inch Uwe Blop of Indiana on the bench with four fouls. He's been sidelined most of this half. With, with him on the bench, they've gone to their outside game, Steve Alford, and he has responded. The kid is playing like, as you mentioned earlier, a seasoned veteran. He just took over this team, and that's why Indiana has this three point lead. Winston Morgan, number 20. The Indiana senior picking up his third foul. All have been here in the second half. A three point Hoosier lead. And Barry Stevens, who had 24 points in Iowa State's one point win over Drake and has 17 tonight, trying to trim the Hoosiers' lead. He'll have a second effort and can pull the Cyclones to within one. The Hoosiers with 17 fouls and blop on the bench. And uh, he can't be too happy sitting over there because he knows the effect that he has on his team. And uh, if he can get back out there without committing a foul, it's going to be nothing but uh, a plus for the Indiana Hoosiers. Frazier now is five for five at the charity strike. They're yelling for the Cyclones defense to tighten up. Indiana by a point, 13-25 remaining in the second half. That'll silence the crowd in a hurry in any state. Stu Robinson's field goal. He has four points. Hoosiers by three. And he faked the pass to the wing and just slipped the two defenders out there and shot a very nice shot. about 30 feet away. I was going to say from the second row. Robinson straight away. Oh, Indiana misses that big man inside. Yes, they do. Hoosiers against the Cyclones in the crowd with a one-point lead. Cyclones again looking to regain the lead in a seesaw second half. Frazier the ball again. Oh, that's 23 points for Barry Stevens. Kenny, he's feeling it. He's in the zone. As soon as he touches the ball, you can expect it to go up. Giomi comes back on a sweet little pass inside. Oh, that was a great pass by number 22 to quiet this crowd down. Uh, if you can execute and get those shots in the paint, you're going to always be in the ball game. And that's what Indiana is doing. 11.50 left. Frazier again. He's got the field here. With a blindfold on him. 51-50 Iowa State. 25 points for Stevens. So Barry, he's got half a loaf. He sure has. Barry Stevens is saying, Steve Alford, who? Delray Brooks the air ball and then Tompkins trying to take a little of the air out of it out of it and he can't slow it down right from the fingertips out of bounds in Indiana trailing by one will come back up the court. Here we go Barry makes a good one on one move. He has the arm on him. He's fading away. Goes up with good balance and just a great release on that ball. What a player. Robinson finds Alfred in the corner. Grayer and Hornacek there in a hurry. Strategically, Iowa State is in a zone defense. They want them to get beat outside. Even though UA Block isn't inside, they are still forcing Indiana to shoot the ball from the outside. And that's what you do when you have the lead. Or, and, and, and you make the team shoot the shots from outside. You eliminate that three-point possibility. And it makes it much easier for you to get the rebound. Iowa State has outscored Indiana. 20 to 16 here in the second half. Alfred a little long. Brooks with a rebound. A big offensive board for Indiana. And he scores and is fouled. Oh, what a big play there. Oh, Brooks. Delray Brooks.
Brooks, Mr. Indiana basketball freshman. He got the rebound and made a 360 circle, and the defenders just kept following him and following him, and he took him right around uh, the paint, back to the baseline for the three-point play or the possible three-point play on Malaya. Sam Hill picking up his third personal. Hill and Tompkins, Iowa State's players with three. 10.45 to go. Indiana leads at 52-51. That is the first offensive rebound that any team has gotten in this second half, and we're almost 10 minutes gone into the second half. Now, the officials in a bit of a discussion with Bobby Knight, who is having a tough time staying within that coach's box. <laughs> <laughs> he calls Alfred over, and he says, you deliver a message for me, will you? <laughs> And he's letting that official know exactly what he thinks about it. Mike Giomi recording his third foul. Bobby Knight, always a story in any basketball arena. <laughs> Sam Hill with his seven points can tie it. He does. 52 all. The 45 second clock in effect tonight. It's hardly had any effect on any game that it's been used early in this 84 85 season and apparently Bobby Knight on that play at the other end was questioning the clock apparently it had gone out of bounds and the clock was not reset that, that is correct and that is a valid point looks like UA block is getting ready to come back in he can't keep him out of this game much longer Delray Brooks to Steve Alford 52 all 10 20 remaining all-American basketball on sports time from Ames, Iowa. And this is just the beginning of over 100 games on sports time. Robinson. Third block, ready to go. Indiana looking to break the tie. The ball not loose from Robinson. He's bumped, bumped heavily by Jeff Greer. And the freshman, who's very quick for his size, he's 6'5", almost 200 pounds, picks up the foul. That was a, uh, one of those situations that Indiana got very lucky that they got the foul. Uh, he had penetrated a little bit and lost control of that basketball, and that quick Iowa State defense was on it like a cat, and uh, he, uh, in trying to get the ball, he ended up fouling him a little bit. 9.57 left. 52 points aside, Indiana blop. Doesn't waste any time, but he's cooled off a bit. Giomi shot rejected, turned aside, but given to Mike Giomi from Newark, Ohio. Will get the bucket, and it's 54-52, Indiana. Indiana again, making its presence felt down underneath. They get an offensive rebound, put it back up, get the goaltending call. Grayer with one dribble. Hornacek, Hill, tall tree, back to Hornacek, and a beautiful give and go. Nine points for Hornacek. That's basketball at its finest. Here you get, you get the pass and make a nice cut, and you get the pass right back, put it in the bucket. That makes everybody happy. Uwe Bloch, the hook off the iron. Gary Tompkins for Iowa State. All the way, hits the bottom of the hoop. Partially blocked by Uwe Block. Block certainly could be the difference for Indiana, but he has four personals with 8.53 left. Giomi, oh, he sinks that in a hurry. He barely held it, 16 points. He and Alfred, each with 16, leading Indiana, and Indiana leading Iowa State, 56-54. Frazier unable to score from the corner. The ball will go to Indiana. And uh, Iowa State getting out of the things that they do best a little bit. Frazier, uh, he's getting ready to go and do a little bit of one, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one than Johnny Orr wants him to do. And Bobby Knight calls a very, very smart timeout because at this point in the game, you want to make sure that you get the shots that you want. You want, don't want to get caught up in a running game. And that's what uh, uh, Indiana and Iowa State were starting to get into. There's a timeout. The Hoosiers. 
Hoosiers of Indiana lead the Cyclones of Iowa State by two. Here we got Kansas State with 5-0. We got Iowa State, Nebraska 5-0, Kansas 6-1, Oklahoma State 3-1, Oklahoma 5-2, Colorado 4-2, Missouri, who we saw play last night with a very fine team, the worst of 4-3. Big 8 basketball. We hope you'll support it throughout this college basketball season, and you'll see a lot of it. Lucius and I are going to travel around the Big 8, put that Big 8 sticker on our suitcases, and <laughs> be with you right into March. <laughs> 56, Looking forward to it. 54, Indiana by two, and they're on the offense. Crowd wanted a violation against Morgan, but he recovered. We got about 16,000 officials in here, and they know each travel, each foul, and they're calling it. <laughs> but it's not intimidating these officials. Under difficult circumstances, they're doing what it takes. Whoa, got it that time, though. Winston Morgan, senior, walks. 22 is Robinson, 21 is Morgan, Alfred out there, Giomi and Blop for Indiana. They lead by two. So the Cyclones setting up here, trying to tie it again. Bobby Knight doesn't like that because they set up a specific play in that timeout, and to have them lose the ball on a turnover, he looked like he was ready to just shoot somebody after that play. Stevens with 25, leading Iowa State. Hill, turnaround jumper. I think that's a very smart play on Iowa State's part. You got Flop in there with foul trouble. They got caught in the man-to-man -man defense. Take it inside. He's not going to be able to do anything to defend and stay in the game. Well, big Sam Hill has 10 points. So we'll watch to see if the Cyclones go steadily to him. Hill with Flop trying to go around him commits his uh-oh fourth personal foul so the big centers hill and blob each with four this play is set up by a good flash by blob and he got the pass from uh, number 21 and on that play hill was in bad body position he jumps high and he has great spring but underneath he got him with the body and that's going to cost that's going to cost iowa state block without a point this half and at the free throw line Lop is four of seven. We've got a big discussion over here with the coaches of Iowa State. They're debating whether to keep Hill in, give him a break, uh, give him a breather to uh, 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 not not get in that fifth foul because if he did, if he does get that fifth foul, it's going to be the lights out for Iowa State inside. And signs are they're going to give Hill a rest. 7:05 showing on the clock. Cyclones trailing by a point. They never led in the first half, but have had the lead at times here in the second half. They've overcome an early 7-0 Indiana lead, and the Hoosiers led at the half by three. Hill over. Oh, Sam Hill. And we got some man-to-man -man pressure now on Indiana. The Cyclones are trying to fall back. Now they've fallen back into their zone, but they are putting tremendous pressure on those guards out there. Wow, short. He was open, and I think he was pretty surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's the easiest shot he's had all night. And this guy, Jomi, again, has the offensive rebound. Iowa State and uh, Indiana is now in the penalty we got six minutes left in this ball game that means any foul that they make is going to give Iowa State a chance to win this game at the free throw line not a very good situation Stevens he is six of six at the line Iowa State with a two-point lead On the uh, fast break, but little Steve Alfred shuts all the crowd up. He's been a 
penetrates and makes a very difficult hanging one-hand shot looks very easy. What a money player he is. Time at 5.47. 59 points for Indiana. They trail by one with the ball. Boy, you just watched this game, and you know this man, Alford. You get down to the last few seconds, you're going to go to him. He's, He's a money a, man. He is a money man. Cyclones by one. Pass underneath. Somehow Tompkins puts glue to the ball. Now Barry Frazier. Barry Stevens comes up with a bucket. Stevens has been incredible. 29 points. And he, as soon as we mention Steve Alford's name, he says, hey, I'm a money player, too. 62-59, Iowa State. with 20, 14 of them here in the second half. Boy, the good shooters, they might miss a couple of shots, but they come back and they keep right on shooting them and they keep right on shooting them with confidence. Alfred and Stevens, classic examples. Grayer, 44. Stevens gets it inside to Tompkins. He shovels the ball off, but a foul is called. Iowa State has number 45. David Moss, a junior, in for the first time. That's the third personal called on Steve Alford. We're going to see Alford here. A very soft defense in the paint, and you can't let a guy get the ball in that area. However, he gets his hands in there. It looked like a good play, but I know, officials, anytime you reach in there and you're out of position, they are going to call the foul automatically, whether you foul him or not. 438 remaining. Iowa State 62, Indiana 61. Tompkins with his eight points tonight, all on field goals. Stevens leads Iowa State with 29. Alfred leads the Hoosiers with 20. Well, a tough free throw to miss there for the Cyclones. Yes, he didn't look like he was in real good rhythm. I think this pace of the game is starting to take its toll on these players. They're not going to shoot the ball as well from the outside. And hence, we got the zone defense. Stu Robinson puts it through the hole, and he has six points, 63-62 Indiana. Hoosiers, as we mentioned, led by three at the half. Iowa State came out and got the first two points of the second half, and it's been nothing more than a three-point differential either way this entire half. It is nip and tuck, nip and tuck. Alfred leading the Hoosiers with 20. Hoosiers with a one-point lead. The Cyclones, Jeff Grayer, a freshman, with four points, will go to the free-throw line. He's two out of four from the line tonight. He's struggling a bit. He got off to a bad start early in the game. He had a chance to knock down two free throws. He missed those. Had a three-point play possibility. Missed what? Missed, made that one, and then he missed another. So a free throw for him is going to be very positive as far as his attitude towards at the end of this game because free throws are going to play a major role in who wins and loses this game. If Iowa State can win it, that'll give them their best start in 28 years, but they've got their hands full here tonight at the Hilton Coliseum. to be trying to pick up the tempo. They're going to be pressing. They're going to be trying to make Indiana make some mental errors, get down and, and score the easy bucket. And of course, if they can get anything on the free throw line, then they want to capitalize on the free throw line. But in this point of the game, your defense is what's going to make things happen for you. 
63 all. And again, Indiana. We, we see Indiana. They've spread it out a little bit. They want that zone to come out a little bit higher. One big man inside at 6'8", Mike Giomi. Alfred doesn't get it. The battle on the boards. And Indiana out man. Stu Robinson has stayed in this game much of the second half. That time Winston Morgan taking the tumble. Alfred in there, Brooks in there, and then the big man Giomi now for the Hoosiers. Boy, talk about desire. We saw three players go up for that rebound, and that ball, it, there was no way anybody was going to get that ball. Here they go. They go up. There's balance, shoulder, power, and hustle. Watch the hustle going out of bounds. You think these guys don't want this game? Here come the Cyclones. Hornacek, Thompson are the guards. Hill is in the middle. Stevens and Grayer are the forwards. Barry Stevens. Offensive foul. Giomi had position at the baseline. That's an awfully tough call for the official to make, but the offensive player was out of control. And when you have an offensive player out of control and you can't really get an angle to see who really blocked and who really charged, it's going to be on that out of control player. Stevens, his second foul. A tie at 63, 320 left in regulation time. And Indiana taking their time, spreading this, spreading this zone out a little bit. They want to get behind the scenes and, and get somebody to get a nice clear shot, but they don't want the long bomb. Unless, of course, it's Mr. Automatic Steve Alford. Hoosiers. That is a, probably about as good a shot as Iowa State is going to give up. And that's right in the middle. It's a, just an extended free throw. A very good shot for Indiana to take in this situation. Hill sets the pick. Unable to hit is Stevens. And the Hoosiers getting that big rebound with 2.18 to go. One shot, one shot only. And that shot they had, they had uh, Mr. Stevens a little bit out of his range shooting that jump shot. Indiana trying to win on the foreign floor, and they'll be back in the Big 8 country. They play at Kansas State on December 22nd against Jack Hartman's Wildcats. And so this is not their only journey into the Big 8 this season. Yes, sir. The, uh, these, these, these Hoosiers, they come to play, and I tell you, at this point in time, that jump shot is going to be awfully tough for anybody to make with less, less than two minutes left to play in this game. Alford makes an incredible shot with arms all around him. And it is a four-point Indiana lead with a minute and a half to go. As soon as I say it, he makes it look easy. Shoot it over two players. What a player. Alford has had some giant baskets here in the second half. A minute 30 to go. The Hoosiers 67, Iowa State 63, and that's the biggest lead that either team has had here in the second half. The half began with Indiana holding a three-point lead, 34-31. And, and I tell you, it's a credit to that Indiana team how they're executing out there. He makes, Halford here makes a head and shoulder fake, goes up with men all over him, great concentration, and makes it look easy. Now, what, what Iowa State is going to have to do is they're going to have to come down and get a good shot and get a score quickly. Put some pressure on Indiana and hope to get that ball back so they can come and tie this game. And with less than a minute to go, they'll look at towards, uh, look towards trying to win this game. But Iowa State has a long uphill battle at this point. The major indoor soccer league season of excitement just keeps on coming here on Sports Time. Friday night at 7.30 Eastern, live action between the Kansas City Comets and the defending champion, Baltimore Blast. That's Saturday at 11.30 Eastern, same-day coverage of the St. Louis Steamers contest against the San Diego Soccer. And Sunday, a live MISL doubleheader.
this Sunday at 4.30 Eastern, a matchup between the Baltimore Blast and again the Kansas City Comets. Then at 7 in the evening Eastern, the Minnesota Strikers taking on the Wichita Wings. We've got it all. Lots of major indoor soccer league play coming your way on Sports Time. The best in college basketball, the Big 8 and more, the NHL, the MISL. This is the place to be sports time. And the place to be tonight, Hilton Coliseum, Ames, Iowa. The pressure on the Cyclones trailing by four with a minute 20 to go. Most teams would go into a zone defense at this point in time to make Iowa State shoot the ball from out of bounds. But Bobby Knight has confidence in his players in that man-to-man -man defense. They're going to stick with it. They're going to make it tough. It'll be just like a zone the way that they go about executing. His fifth, Bobby Knight loses his second player. Center Uwe Blop went out earlier. Make a note, a big note, that Iowa State has brought in number 11, Ron Virgil. Virgil is a 6'4", light, 162-pound junior from Chicago. We haven't seen him all night, but Virgil is known for his dramatics an outstanding clutch player number 11 ron virgil he's in the game for the cyclones they trail indiana by four with a minute 17 remaining and at the free throw line barry stevens who already has 29 points and keep in mind stevens is perfect at the line seven of seven and that could bode ill for him because when you shoot him that well and you're in a pressure situation it's so easy to miss that first shot but they have a uh, number 11 Virgil who comes in and he's the guy that makes things happen for him. He's got all that great quickness. We're going to see a lot of full court pressure by Iowa State. 67, 65, 31 points for Stevens. 23 is Brooks for Indiana. Now it's Stu Robinson. Less than a minute to go. Hoosiers with a ball and a two point lead. Don't forget, 30 seconds to go on the time clock. And they're going to keep this ball out here. They're going to spread it out. They don't want to even shoot the ball. And if they can, they're going to just keep the ball in Steve Alford's hands because they know if there's a foul, he'll be the one that can knock those free throws down. Uh, it looks like they, their Cyclones are being very smart. They fouled Delray Brooks to freshman. Stevens, the foul, his third. The clock that you're seeing at the top of your screen is the game time clock with 42 seconds to go. 67, 65, Indiana has the lead. Uh, Johnny Orr calls a very smart timeout. He knows that there's a freshman at the line in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Very big free throw for Indiana. If the freshman misses this, misses this free throw, then they get a shot to get the rebound, go down, and tie this game up. So anytime you're going to have a young guy shooting that free throw uh, uh, with a one-on-one -on -one situation less than a minute to go, there is tremendous pressure on this kid. But uh, Delray Brooks, I've seen him play before. He is a very fine shooter, and he will see we'll see what his medal, what type of medal he has. You know, we talked earlier about the fact these two teams have not met since 1963. In fact, Iowa State and Indiana played a home-and-home -home series in 62 and 63. Here in Ames in 62, the Cyclone. 83-70. The next year, 1963 in Bloomington, Iowa State won it again, 63-55. So Iowa State trying to run their record to 3-0 against Indiana, but Indiana with only 42 seconds left, certainly having one better card than the Cyclones at this juncture. That's right, but there's a lot of time left in this basketball game, and a lot of things can happen. This is where the strategy you hope can pay off for you. Well, Delray Brooks will go to the free throw line. This young man is a freshman from Michigan City, Indiana. And all of Indiana is watching now. Brooks has not been to the free throw line tonight. But in the previous four games, he is five for five. But he's a very fine shooter. And he rises to the occasion and knocks it down. He doesn't even come close to missing that shot. He can extend the Hoosiers lead to four. He fails to, and it is 68-65, Indiana. Uh, Iowa State's taking a lot of time here. They're going to have to get this ball up and get a shot, get a good shot, and hopefully get some pressure on them. The battle is Hill on Sam Hill. 23 seconds left. 
It all boils down to this. Is Barry Stevens the man that'll take the shot? He's number 35 with 31 points for the Cyclones. Here's the key man, Ron Virgil. He doesn't get it. Here's Hill, but they're going to call a jump ball. Possession goes to Indiana. The oh possession boy. to Indiana. They went to number 11. Johnny Orr's key clutch player, Ron Virgil, who had not handled the ball since he came great pass to the baseline player Virgil. He goes up, gathers himself. Nice release on the ball. It just doesn't stay down. Oh, heartbreak in Iowa, in, uh, well, Iowa State because they had a good shot. They had a good shot at it. Virgil had the ball for the first time. Finally, just before that, when Hill got the ball, he had stopped play. The first really possession decision we have had the entire evening. That is so unfortunate for uh, that Iowa State team. This is one of those situations where I know they would love to have a chance at a jump ball, but with, with the uh, new college ruling that alternate possession on jump ball situation, Indiana gets the ball. 
and maybe the ball game. So, the questionable use of the possession from a few seasons back, now in Big 8 play, and in this late game tonight, the 45-second clock, it really wasn't a factor tonight. But college basketball toying with different rules, making changes, and a lot of times you think, well, it never comes into play, but right. my golly, what a big instance there of the possession rule. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's, it's, it's costing Iowa State. It's going to cost them a spot in that top 20. Five seconds to go. Indiana looking as though they are going to come out of here with a huge victory to run their record to three and two. It's uh, still a lot of basketball to be played with five seconds left. There's going to be tremendous pressure on this pass. There's going to be tremendous pressure on these guys to not let them get the ball in and maybe get a, a turnover or an interception. Simmons to Brooks. No foul, but the ball to Indiana. Three seconds to go. This has just flat out been a tremendous game. And as you said earlier, it's a shame that one of these teams is going to have to leave the floor with a loss. And that is, that is so true. And we see Bobby Knight with three seconds left. They got two ticks off the clock on that. And the clock is who they're fighting right now. They aren't really worried about Iowa State. They don't think that if they do lose the ball, Iowa State is not going to have enough time to really get up a good shot. Here we see great pressure on Delray Brooks. He comes over and gets all ball. Ball is knocked out of bounds. Delray tried to fall down and get a little foul call, but the official right on top of that play. Johnny Orr saying about his team, we're not big, but we are quick and we are exciting. And the fans here, standing room only, over 14,000 know it. And I think all of us on Sports Time's point of view, watching it here and watching it around Mid-America, realize that Johnny Orr's words about his Cyclones are very true. That is, that is no truer words were ever spoken. This has been one of the most exciting games I've had a chance to work with. You see the different things that this Iowa State team can do. They can control the tempo. They can pick up the tempo. They can shoot it inside, and they can shoot it outside. So this is definitely going to be a team to be reckoned with in the Big 8. Can the Cyclones do the impossible? Marty Simmons will inbound for Indiana. He throws it in to Giomi, and only one second elapses. Well, I'll tell you, these are some major league fouls going on. <laughs> Giomi can take it. He's 6'8", 225 pounds. Third personal called on Jeff Grayer. Johnny Orr fit to be tied. Yes, and this is probably the most emotion we've seen Johnny Orr show all night. I hadn't seen him move from the bench, and it's amazing how cool these coaches can be under pressure. At the number 41, Giomi with 16 points tonight has not been that strong at the free throw line. In fact, he now is 0 for 3. Two seconds now remaining should Giomi fail to score here. He puts it away. Three-point lead for Indiana. Gotta just throw up a hope to die. I should say a two-point lead. Oh, and they almost get the job done. Boy, this was an exciting game from start to finish. There was still a chance for them to put this game in overtime with that last shot. Well, take a deep breath. The Big Ten, Bobby Knight, the Indiana Hoosiers, now 3-2, and two, defeat an extremely strong Johnny Orr, Iowa State Cyclone Big 8 team. The final, 69-67. And we'll be back here in Ames, Iowa, in just a moment. Iowa State hosted Morgan State. For details on the non